Hey everybody, hope and pray that you're doing well. Today as we come to our word from the word, and today that word is truth. Truth. Now, one of the things that's going on here uh, today in Deuteronomy chapter 18, and I know we made a, a big jump from chapter 10 yesterday, but uh, what I want us to see here and what I believe the Lord is showing us is, is even as the people uh, previously, as Moses was looking back, even at Mount Sinai and the people were afraid to afraid of God, you know, didn't want to go in his presence because they wanted to send Moses. Moses was the one appointed for that job. And and so it even goes back to them kind of having a desire for someone to be that mediator uh, between them and God. And so one of the ways that God is going to speak to the people is through prophets. Uh, and it is a prophet like unto Moses. Um, and so looking ahead, there's a lot packed in here that really is a foreshadowing of Jesus Christ as the great prophet, of course, in the New Testament. Um, but it's also a foreshadowing of all the Old Testament prophets. Uh, all the times that God spoke through uh, various people, uh, as we see a great deal of our Old Testament is dedicated to the prophets and their ministry and the way that God spoke through them. So here, the thing is, is how would we know what the truth is? If How do we know who a true prophet is? How do we know that we're really getting a message from the Lord? And so Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 18 through 22 God's word says this, and this is Moses speaking, um, uh, and this is the Lord responding back to Moses as he's saying this. He says, I will raise up for them a prophet uh, like you from among their brethren and will put my words in his mouth and he shall speak to them all that I command him. And it shall be that whoever will not will, will not hear my words, which he speaks in my name, I will require it of him. But the prophet who presumes to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or who speaks in the name of other gods, that prophet shall die. And if you say in your heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord has not spoken? When a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if the thing does not happen or come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord has not spoken. The prophet has spoken it presumptuously, you shall not be afraid of him. Now you can see even in there that uh, a foreshadowing of, of the coming of Christ and a foreshadowing of him being the great prophet. But at the same time, you think about it, if there, if Moses was telling the people that they were going to have uh, other um, other speakers, other prophets that were going to talk to God and give them a message from God, you can imagine that they would be thinking just as we do today many times when we hear uh, pastors and, and preachers and evangelists and we hear them and, and we hear people speak about God and we want to know, well, wait a minute, is that what God said? Now, it's a little bit different as sometimes the prophets occasionally were talking about uh, futuristic things and, and a lot of uh, you know things that were coming uh, uh, foretelling the future. And that did happen a lot in the Old Testament. <clears throat> But basically, if you, you see, as we read our Old Testament, you see that every uh, one of those events um, has already taken place except for the end times prophecies. Everything else that was given actually came true. So we have no reason to doubt that everything else that was spoken about the future will also come true. And see, that's how we know what the truth is. Because we know it was a word from God and we know it was inspired by God. Why? Well, God just gave us the reason. Because it's come to pass. And it, you think about all the false prophets. And these are ones that even today, if you know, how many people have predicted the, the end of the world already? And how many people have predicted when the rapture was going to happen and when the apocalypse was going to happen? And, and all these things they've already predicted and all those things have come and gone. And that shows us that they were false prophets. They were not of God. They were not speaking on behalf of God. But even going back into our, our how this would apply to you and I today, we, have, we should have the same desire for God to speak to us and to, for us to be able to discern what is true and what is false. 
that is one of the things that we are to be raising our children so that they would be rightly dividing the word of truth. We're to be helping brothers and sisters in Christ so that they can do the same. That's the past couple Sundays we've been talking about being the family of God. And even on Wednesday night Bible studies, talking about coming together to share the gospel and how to share Christ as a group, how to do it as a team. Now, with all of that being put together, how is anybody supposed to discern in this world today where nobody wants to accept anything as truth and there is so much uh, negative and so much falsehood just in general? How do we know what's true? Well, at the end of the day, we can only place our faith and trust in God. Place our faith and trust in Jesus Christ. The indwelling Holy Spirit will give us what we need to know. He will give us the discernment between true prophets and false prophets, a, a true word from God and a false word from God. There's a, there's a couple of easy things that we can know. If it's something that somebody tells you that they got a message from God and, and they tell you and it's contrary to God's word, it didn't come from God. It, and it's kind of like he said, if they tell you something's going to happen and it doesn't happen, then it wasn't a word from God. But it, what we really need to do is we just need to spend more time in God's word. We need to spend more time in prayer. We need to allow the Holy Spirit to speak to us more. That way, we'll have no question what's true and what's false. You know, I've used this example many times. And, and you know, especially we know that Satan counterfeits everything. I mean, every single thing. And, and that's a, a story and a, a lesson for another time. But one of the things that, you know, that uh, bankers do with counterfeit money is they don't study the counterfeit, they study the real thing. And so what we need to do is not study, uh, you know, it's it's okay to, to educate yourself on some falsehoods and some lies that are out there so that you can be better prepared to defend your faith. But let's not spend so much time studying the enemy. Why don't we spend time studying the truth? Because when we know the truth, not only will it set us free, but we'll be able to spot a falsehood very quickly. God bless you, and I pray you have a great, great day.